This week, from the car park of the Wickford Salvation Army, our food bank will be serving food between the hours of 10 o'clock and 11.30. Our theme for today is those times when joy does not come easily. Carol's going to read to us from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 13. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord, that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Amen. In the year 1921, the Prime Minister of Sweden had a copy of the following words on his desk. Thank you, Lord, for wayside roses, even for the thorns beside. Thank you for the prayers you granted and for those that you denied. Thank you, Lord, for precious comfort in my hours of grief and pain. Thank you, Lord, for your precious promise, life eternal I shall gain. The words were part of a song written by Swedish Salvation Army officer August Ludwig Storm. It is a song, it is a song of thankfulness to God in all circumstances. The original version says tack min or thank you no less than 32 times. In Sweden, and in communities of Swedish descent in the United States of America, it is used at family gatherings such as birthdays, anniversaries, and of course church celebrations. When Commissioner Florence Booth first heard the words, she was touring Salvation Army churches in Sweden. The year was 1910. A deaf and dumb brigade stood up and as a soloist sang 
presented the words. As they thanked God for the prayers that were denied, she was moved to her very core. Sometimes it is easy to be joyful when our bodies are working well and when our minds are full of pleasing thoughts. But how do we cope when not only our minds and our bodies are working against us, but also our spirits? How do we cope with the thorns of life, with hours of grief and pain? Many are familiar with the ruins of Coventry Cathedral, firebombed in the Second World War. A short walk from the old cathedral brings you to the modern cathedral just 100 yards away. A previous provost of the cathedral, John Petty, wrote in the introduction to the guidebook that to walk from the ruins of the old cathedral into the splendour of the new is to walk from Good Friday to Easter. Joy in our spirits becomes possible when we ourselves are engaged in a journey from Good Friday, something bad, to Easter, something good. We start such a pilgrimage when we, return, when we turn round, when we repent from going in our own direction. Instead, we start going in God's direction. For when we become Christians, we encounter the forgiveness of Jesus at the cross and can start our remarkable journey of travelling with him. It is travelling with Jesus that makes all the difference. Spiritual joy can transcend everything as our lives are transformed. We realise that we are not called to permanently dwell in the sorrow of a Good Friday experience, but instead to live the call to a new life the resurrection reality of Easter Day. In 1873, hymn writer Francis Bottom expressed it like this, Lo, a new creation dawning, Lo, I rise to life divine, In my soul an Easter morning, I am Christ's, and Christ is mine. When our spiritual joy wells up in our lives, then it can not only transcend everything, it can transform everything. Not only the spirit, but the mind and the body as well. Many of us can remember some of the saints of our church congregations down the years. Those who, in spite of physical and mental struggles, had a deep joy of Jesus welling up inside them. Their spiritual joy overcoming and transforming difficulties of body, mind and spirit. Such people are an example of a Bible text we can find from Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10. He said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. This can be our experience. When we have the joy of Easter in our hearts, when we know the reality that Christ died for our own sins and that we too are going to be raised to live with him, then our whole outlook is changed. The promise Jesus gave to the disciples on Maundy Thursday, the day before Good Friday, is this. I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. John chapter 16, verse 22. The outpouring of joy on that Easter Sunday was a joy in every aspect of human experience, body, mind and spirit. Think of the physical race of Peter and John to the empty tomb early in the morning. Then the mental relief of knowing that something amazing was happening. And finally, the spiritual joy about the significance of it all, that indeed God had come to draw his people to himself. 
as a result of the spiritual joy, they actually changed the day on which they worshipped God. It used to be the seventh day of the week, Saturday, celebrating the end of the first week after God had finished working at the creation of the world. But it now became the first day of the week, Sunday, celebrating the new work of recreating people which God had now completed through his son Jesus. It became a day for living and rekindling joy and delight. Romans 14.17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The Christian faith is a faith of joy, for one reason and one reason alone, the resurrection. Our worship of God on this special day, Sunday, Resurrection Day, will reflect our joy for all that he has done for us. Spiritual joy in the Holy Spirit cannot be separated. Christian joy is not actually dependent on us. It is dependent on the Holy Spirit, although we must cooperate with the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. The book of Acts is full of the joy of the Holy Spirit. Acts 13.52 says the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. Joy is the second fruit of the Spirit, second only to love. See Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. It is almost as if for the Christian, joy and the Holy Spirit are synonyms. Where the Spirit of God is, there is joy. And where there is joy, the Holy Spirit is never very far away. And Paul writes in that sort of vein to the church in Rome, chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace as you trust him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I would encourage us as Christians to pause and reflect that we are involved in a paradox of joy. We can be joyful, indeed should cultivate a spirit of joy in spite of unanswered prayers, in spite of thorns, in spite of grief and pain. We can be joyful even when our minds and bodies are suffering. One writer has said this, Christian joy is a state of blessedness depending on no outward circumstances. It comes from the Christ-centred life so that even suffering for Christ's sake ought to bring joy. And so Paul exhorts us in his letters to be a people who rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice always, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. And Paul knew from personal, from personal experience what he was writing about. He writes his second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 7 to 10. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. I love this quotation from the great 19th century Baptist preacher, Charles Haddon Spurgeon. When you speak of heaven, your whole face should light up. When you speak of hell, your ordinary face will do. We are called to live our lives well away from Good Friday, journeying with Jesus through Easter Sunday. To travel joyfully, means we need to do two things. Firstly, throw off everything that hinders 
and the sin that so easily entangles. This is because God's joy and man's sin cannot cohabit. And secondly, since the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, is the Spirit of joy, we need to invite him into our lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a comfort to read of those of long ago who, despite the difficulties and dangers that they were called upon to face, were able to rejoice in the Lord and trust in your never-failing faithfulness. I pray that like them, I too may receive your abiding joy and discover like them that the joy of the Lord is my strength that the peace that comes from you is an abiding peace that enables me to overcome all difficulties of life in the power of your Holy Spirit. So fill my heart with your abiding joy so that I may rejoice in life's circumstances, in periods of plenty and during those seasons when I have very little, in times of hardship, as well as those times of great sufficiency. Thank you that I am your child, and you are my Father and Sovereign Lord. May my heart rejoice in good times and in bad, and may your abiding joy and perfect peace find residence in my heart, as I rest in your love and trust in your unfailing goodness. In the name of Jesus. Amen. O Jesus Christ, when all is darkness and we feel our weakness, give us the sense of your presence, your love and your strength. Help us to have perfect trust in your protecting love and strengthening power so that nothing may frighten or worry us. For living close to you, we shall see your hand your purpose, your will through all things. I open my heart to your love and I bask in the glow of divine light and understanding. I pray for healing in the love of the Lord today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>